put in the, uh, the thing here, got the battery all hooked up and uh, press the power button. Nothing. Nope. Not coming on. This $1,200, 36-volt, 40-amp-hour lithium iron phosphate battery is completely dead, completely useless. I can't do anything with it. So my Newport phone app sees the battery, but it just can't connect to it. What happened? What went wrong? How did I get here? And what can you learn from this? You can learn from my mistakes and make your own judgments based on the information that I give you. Let's back up all the way, shall we? Last summer, Newport Vessels sent me their NT300 three horsepower electric outboard motor and their biggest battery, this 36 volt, 40 amp hour battery. I used it several times, everything worked great. At the end of the season though, I had this fully charged in my garage last November and never ended up going out. So it sat. And then what I did was I brought it into my basement so that it wouldn't be subject to freezing temperatures. You want to have these things stored where you're keeping them at like 60% charge and you're checking them every month or couple months and recharging them back up again. These have a battery management system in them, a BMS. So this is not, in this case, is not a regular lead acid battery. Instead, it's probably a whole bunch of little cylindrical batteries on a circuit board with another circuit board on top of it, wired up, sitting in a box with insulation around it and two wires coming up to these things. Some of these boxes are serviceable where they have places where you can take them apart. Some of them have a reset button on them. This Newport 36 volt 40 amp hour battery has none of that. It is completely sealed off with no reset buttons or anything like that. I left this sitting in my basement for approximately six months doing nothing to it at all. And when I put it away, I believe it was fully charged. Here's problem number one. When you're using this for your electric outboard motor on your small boat, how do you get it down to 70% if you fully charge it for taking it out the next time? Or how do you just charge it up to 70%? Do you have to sit there and check the app every 20 minutes or you know, test it with a voltmeter all the time to see whenever it's at that percentage? And what is 70% of charge? Because with batteries, it's like if this is 36 volts, whenever it's needing to be recharged, it's like at 34 volts or something. So it's not 70% of 36 as a total, it's a percentage of that. I couldn't find any simple information that shared exactly how you get it to that level and how you maintain it like that. And that's a weakness, I think, with these batteries because my thinking is there should be a button on it that says long-term storage and maybe it discharges itself down to there or you run it and then the light changes and says ready for storage, something like that. Maybe another light comes on whenever it needs to be recharged and checked. I brought this up this spring to take it out and go to use it again. I hooked it up to the charger that came with it which is this Newport charger right here. And when you plug this charger into the wall, this light blinks green. When you connect it to this and it's charging, the light goes, I believe, steady red. There's a fan that kicks on and then the light changes color when it's fully charged and it stops making noise. It wouldn't charge. I unplugged it, tried it again, replugged it in, left it sit on there like that for a while. It never took a charge. And the reason it didn't take a charge is because these chargers, are not meant to charge them up from zero. Which brings us into another aspect about lithium iron phosphate batteries. Apparently they're not supposed to ever be run down really low like this one did. Now, how it ran down low, I don't know. Could it be because I have this connection still hooked up to the terminals? It seems odd to me that it would have discharged all the way down. And how far down did it discharge? It's down to two volts, 2.3 volts. Some people say that you can use a different type of battery charger to try to bring it up to where it's reading voltage and at a certain point then you switch over to the appropriate lithium iron phosphate charger that will taper off and shut off the way it's supposed to to protect this battery and charge it appropriately. 
So there are chargers out there that can charge from zero volts. However, I don't have one of those. So what I tried were two other 12 volt chargers that I have. One of them is a jump box for a car and I decided to take the chance. And just so you know, this is not an endorsement to do so. The things I do are at my own risk. I am not condoning trying any of the things that I tried to revive this battery. I hooked it up to it, turned it on, and it read it as this battery being fully charged and it would not charge this battery. So that didn't work. So then I took my four amp 12 volt battery charger that I used to charge up my trolling motor, clipped that on here. That wouldn't charge it either because once again, that has the same kind of thing with a blinking light till things are connected and then it's either gonna be solid red or solid green if it's charging or fully charged. Now, some people say the zero voltage chargers that start at zero voltage are the way to go, but also you can read other stuff that talks about, I believe it's like dendrites and some of the problems that happen inside of the cells of these things whenever the charge gets too low and then you charge them back up again and that can cause dangerous situations in the battery where cells die or the battery fails or things blow up or whatever they do whenever they go bad. Some people say that that's what can happen. So then I went back to the owner's manual for this battery. And it actually indicated that if your battery is below the charge that you could try that method. So that was the direction I was heading until I posted a couple of things on YouTube and a couple other places saying, I've got a $1,200 brick here, this battery. I left it sitting in my basement all winter long and it's dead now. Newport Vessels saw that and reached out to me and said, hey, your battery's less than a year old. You may have a warranty issue. And they pointed me in the direction to be able to fill out warranty information. So here's my dilemma. Here's where I'm sitting right now with this. Option A, I buy one of these battery chargers off of Amazon and it's supposed to be able to charge this from zero, but also I may be eligible for a warranty claim. I may have voided that warranty claim by making this video and talking about how I've hooked up a bunch of other things to it, trying to see what would happen. But I don't feel like I actually was running any voltage through here with those chargers because neither of them would activate. What do we learn from this? Well, first of all, if you live in an area like I do where you might be taking four to six months off from operating your boat with one of these, you can't just take this out, set it in the basement, forget it, and expect it to work again in the spring. Obviously, this failed this very first year doing that. And just so you know, my e-propulsion did not fail and I did the exact same thing with that one. I'm not saying that that's a failure of this and a pro to the e-propulsion one, but maybe it has a better BMS system in it. Maybe I just got lucky, I don't know. If these require care in the off season, I think that's a problem for some people. If you buy the expensive charger with the expensive battery, and I'm not just, I'm not picking on Newport here, anybody who sells any of these types of things, you'll see that the charger is kind of pricey and the battery is kind of pricey. And then you have to buy an additional charger for whenever you've left it go too low, that's an added expense. If there's a risk by using that other kind of charger, that's a problem as well because we're skeptical enough as people about these batteries and this technology, we don't need to add in more challenges like that. Which is why I feel like the batteries ideally should be even more sophisticated, which would make them more expensive. But if this had a light on it that said, you know, fully charged or ready for storage or give it a bump, that would really help because then I could go down and visually look at the battery and know what to do. And it would be nice if this phone app actually allowed me to do some other types of diagnostic things, but all I can ever get it to do is tell me the state of charge when it's working. Not having a way to discharge it some for long-term storage is a challenge. Because you can't always just say, oh, well, let me go take my boat out for 20 minutes to run it down to the appropriate level for long-term storage. That seems a little odd to me. So all hope is not lost. This is not a woe is me video. I know what I did. 
I ignored this battery for a long time. There'll be more about this. I'm gonna try that charger. In the meantime, watch this. Thank you.